Hey, trucked up guys and gals. As you likely know, Stellantis has launched the Ram 1500 Ram Charger, a range extending hybrid like EV, and all the top truck YouTube influencers are raving about it after being invited to Texas to promote it on the company's behalf. There's been a lot of hype about this truck, but is any of it really worth all the buzz? We'll look at how this might be the greatest marketing genius move ever demonstrated by one of the big three regarding EV trucks, while at the same time, possibly one of the worst trucks you could buy. Let's get trucked up and dig into the details. Now, when I say launch, I mean one step above vaporware here. Ram's fully electric Ram REV 1500 is a lot closer to the finish line than the Ram Charger, supposedly hitting production by the end of 2024. The Ram Charger is expected sometime in 2025. However, based on every EV-oriented truck to date, expect that to be delayed or changed entirely. This new direction by the parent company Stellantis is a smart one. Is likely based on feedback from truck owners, what's happened historically already with the EV truck market. Sometimes it doesn't pay to be first out the gate. Ram is sampling the waters, and so far, the reaction from traditional truck guys has been exceptionally positive compared to fully electric trucks. However, when we get deeper into the details, you soon realize how this truck might just be the most complex hybrid ever and that raises some bigger questions. So first, let's break down what this thing really is, how it's set up, and then I'll dive into the numbers behind it, and we'll see what we're really getting and whether it's better, the same, or worse than the current EV trucks being offered today. The Ram Charger is being presented as an EV truck with a range extender, but that's not entirely accurate. Let me explain. Tesla's offering a battery bank in the bed of the Cybertruck as an extender. That would actually fit the title, but this is not that. In fact, technically, it is what is termed a series hybrid. What's the difference? Well, a series hybrid has been around for over a century. This is old tech and has basically been used in diesel electric configurations and locomotives and sea vessels. So a lot of ships have gone with this system. Porsche even used it back in the early racing days in some of their racing cars. Basically, it removes the standard drivetrain from the equation and eliminates the load and demand on the engine when one delivers power through a mechanical transmission. Here's what Wikipedia had to say on this. Electric transmissions have been available as an alternative to conventional mechanical transmissions since 1903. Typically, mechanical transmissions impose many penalties, including weight, bulk, noise, cost, complexity, and a drain on engine power with every gear change, whether it's accomplished manually or automatically. Unlike internal combustion engines, electric motors do not require a transmission. So basically, the motor can be smaller because it's under less demand and its sole purpose is to charge up a battery bank or deliver power directly to the two electric motors or, or do both of those things. In this case, with the Ram Charger, it has a lithium ion battery pack, two electric motors front and rear, much like the F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T and the Tesla Cybertruck that it will be competing against if it does make it to market. However, its battery is odd. It's listed as smaller with only 70.8 kilowatt hour being usable by you, the driver, but on what they claim is a 92 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is strange indeed. So let me explain. It's only slightly less than the smallest battery pack of 98 kilowatt hours in the F-150 Lightning standard range, but getting a paltry pre-production estimate of only 145 miles of range compared to the Lightning's 240 miles. With only the history of EV trucks to date to go on, that battery only range estimate will likely drop, not increase, as it did with all the pre-production hype around every one of these EV trucks and then what actually came to market. Cybertruck, for example, claimed 500 miles in its top end, and then down to 350, and then I believe it was 250 or 300 for its base. Well, its best 
is coming in at 340 with the RAM charger. As the battery reaches a certain low charge point, we don't know what that is yet, but basically the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 turns over and uses gasoline from the onboard 27 gallon fuel tank to charge the battery up and keep the driver going without needing to stop to charge. All told, the RAM charger will get a combined gas and electric range of around 6 190 miles is what they're hoping for. It also has a charging port for DC fast charging as well. So yes, it's an electric truck with a massive onboard gas generator under the hood. If you pop the hood, it looks like a typical internal combustion engine truck with no frunk. Basically, it's like a Chevy Volt or the old BMW i3 on steroids. On the surface, this actually looks like what everybody's been wanting. An EV that covers the range of a traditional gasoline truck whenever you want it, but it can also travel just your commutes on a daily basis strictly on electricity. It's, it's the best of both worlds. But is it what we're really getting? So I have to jump in on my own video after recording here and put in this quick edit because what I just discovered is quite a shocker. I was under the assumption at this point that the first 145 miles that you'd be driving with the Ram Charger would be electric only. But according to Ram Charger's own promotional video, the 130 kilowatt generator that runs on gasoline runs all the time. Which means that's kind of a deal breaker. If this is right, it means that no matter what, the gas is being burned to charge the batteries which seems absolutely ridiculous. Don't take my word for it. Here's the clip. This has its own built-in charging system. It's a battery electric truck with a 92 kilowatt hour battery and a 130 kilowatt generator that charges all the time. Like I said, make what you want of that, but it doesn't look very good. So obviously I can't show you all of the audio and video for copyright purposes. I'm just reporting on this. So I will provide a link down below to the full video, the promotional video from Ram Trucks. So you can watch it for yourself, make your own assessment, see what you think. Anyway, back to the rest of the video. Let's think about this in four parts. Weight, complexity, cost, both upfront and over the life of the vehicle, and practicality. First, the weight. This will be a very heavy truck. Let's start looking at some things here. The battery size will be comparable to the standard range F-150 Lightning, only off by six kilowatt hours. We've got one that's 92 kilowatt, one that's 98 kilowatt hours. According to Thunder Said Energy, the average weight per kilowatt hour is around four kilograms in your standard modern EV, which means the Ram Charger battery will weigh in only 24 kilograms less than the Lightning at an estimated 368 kilograms for the batteries alone. Never mind the enclosure, the wiring harnesses, and armor plating to protect them. Now let's add in the Pentastar V6, which will be requiring its own wiring, radiator, fans, alternator, and other related electric charging components. According to Monroe & Associates, we're looking at close to 270 kilograms or 600 pounds. In other words, the likelihood is that the Ram Charger will weigh more than the Lightning and Cybertruck and closer to the Rivian R1T. Add to that a full tank of gas at 27 gallons with each gallon weighing 2.7 kilograms and you've got another 73 kilograms or 162 pounds. And that doesn't include the gas tank, the fuel pump, fuel filters, and all associated components. Then there's the infrastructure around an internal combustion engine like exhaust, that will have to meet all the emission control requirements of a traditional truck. It's gonna have the muffler, it's gonna have the pipes, it's gotta have the exhaust manifolds, all that fun stuff. So let's add another 100 kilograms or 220 pounds to the mix. That weight carries a cost, especially in efficiency. The more the weight, the more mass has to be pushed through the air. And as the speed increases, so does the drag. But more importantly, this leads us to the second reality surrounding this vehicle and that's complexity. It's somewhat surprising that a portion of the pickup truck community quickly embraced this product while citing every worry about EV trucks and avoiding them like the plague. The bad news for them 
is that this truck carries all those perceived inherent risks that they're worried about, whether real or imagined, since many are nothing more than FUD, by the way. I'll provide a link at the end to my video that addresses that very issue. But hey, let's look. The big ones that everyone's worried about, battery degradation, battery fires, the use of cobalt from child slave labor camps in Africa, etc., etc., etc. Although there is no information as to what type of lithium ion battery will be used in the RAM charger yet, the point is that all the worries, even though many of them might be completely or at least partially unfounded, exist in this truck. But on top of all the workings of a typical EV, this truck now includes all the old world realities of maintaining a gas engine. Oil changes, fuel filters, oil filters, tune-ups, hose replacements, spark plugs, mufflers, exhaust pipes, and the list goes <gasps> on and on. So, as far as complexity goes, it's not quite equivalent to the requirements of owning both uh, one gas vehicle and one EV vehicle. <laughs> but it's a heck of a lot more complex than either one of those separately. And complexity not only means more can go wrong, and that means it probably will. It also means increased costs for you. This thing won't be cheap. We've heard a lot about how EV trucks are only for the rich. Well, I'm sure in the heck not rich and I own one. And that's really changed, not just with incentives, but we're seeing the prices come down quite a lot lately, but still, Let's take a look at what we've got to get out for money in one of these babies to make sure that Ram can make a profit. A 92 kilowatt hour battery bank, two electric motors, one pricey Pentastar V6, and all the trappings of the famous luxury of the Ram brand will have this truck gliding somewhere in the stratosphere. But initial purchase price aside, a lot of the cost benefits of an EV truck are lost on the Ram Charger. What is this so-called range extender worth to a truck buyer? Is it really that important and willing to spend that much more money on an ongoing basis to maintain this thing? This brings us to practicality. I, I truly see this as an impractical truck. The new Ram 1500 Hurricane with the new turbocharged inline six will provide an almost identical range. So if you want 690 miles or 1,110 kilometers of range, just buy the standard 1500. If you mainly use your truck less than 300 miles or 500 kilometers per day, then just buy an EV truck if you want electric and not burning gas. If you are towing and hauling great distances, using a gooseneck or fifth wheel, going camping every weekend with a travel trailer, or hauling gravel every day, well, why would anyone buy this over a diesel or gas truck? The answer that Ram wants you to leap to is that you can have both. Drive on electric most of the time and then gas for the odd trips. And it's so convenient and there's no extra worries or cost. Well, for somebody who sells a lot of engines and has a factory that makes a lot of engines and doesn't want to have to revamp their whole factory overnight and still produce those engines, this is a sweet deal. But I don't know how sweet it is for you and me. Do you remember all the memes and FUD and actual videos that we saw, you know, of Teslas being charged up with gas generators and how ridiculous that seemed. You buy an electric vehicle and then you get stranded and you have to pull out the, the big generator and you got to charge it up off the generator. Well, take that and factor it by the Fujita scale and you've got a Category 5 marketing masterpiece for Stellantis and a practical catastrophe for you. Personally, I would steer clear of this so-called range anxiety killer. Sure, for some, range anxiety is still a thing, but the Silverado EV is promising 425 miles already with no pee stops, lunch breaks, or pullouts for drive through donuts. I mean, how far can you drive without stopping? Six, eight, ten hours? Not me, man. I'm pulling over. Ram's own REV 1500 is claiming a minimum 350 miles already. If Tesla ever gets their formula right on those 4680 battery cells, 500 miles is right around the corner. How long do you drive before you eat anyway? Stop for lunch, plug in, come back from lunch, drive another 400 plus miles. If range and flexibility are that important to you, stick with the gas or diesel for another year or two and see what unfolds. 
rather than taking the bait on a century-old low-tech sales pitch to feed and reinforce EV fears that are likely going to disappear anyway. If you, if you like this content and you'd like to see me and my channel make it on YouTube, I'm working day in, day out to reach a thousand subscribers and you're the only one who can get me there. And I'm counting on your support, so please click that like, subscribe, and bell notification icons below, and I will continue to bring you more trucked up videos. Thanks for watching.